Uh, Lorna's the first time cool or on leaseholds. How are you, Lorna? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. I mean, I wish it was the first time we'd done this story. And it's one of those stories that I do that makes it makes me feel slightly impotent, really, because you want to be able, if you get hordes of people ringing you about tr troubles with leaseholds in London, to be able to point them in a particular direction or give them some kind of help or guidance. And quite often, I'm just like some sort of voyeur. I just have to sit here and listen, and it's just horrible. Love to hear your story, please. Maybe it's a happy story, Lorna. <laughs> Unfortunately not. Um... So I, I'm, I'm a first-time buyer and I bought my property in 2017 off a well-known developer and um, everything went swimmingly well. I used the developer solicitor, which was probably a bit of a mistake on my part because certain aspects weren't pointed out to me. And also when um, buying the property, the developer promised XYZ. Um, that didn't come to fruition. I think one of my biggest, well, a couple of biggest frustrations myself about leasehold um, itself, it's the basically restrictions in terms of we have a problems in terms of communal issues, etc. The developer forces us to go back to the managing agent. Yes. Unfortunately, the managing agent um, pushes us through um, their their work, their systems, and the charges get back to us instead of the developer actually fixing them um, itself. And the other biggest problem that we face is our standing charge for hot water and heating. So we get charged a minimum of £32 a month, even if we don't use the hot water or heating. And that is set by the developer itself. And that's... Um, you know, and that's compare. That's really unfair compared to the rest of the market. Um, so we're paying a minimum of thirty-two pounds a month if we don't use the hot water and heating, and that's um, that's we're forced into that by the actual developer itself. Um, so unfortunately, it's not a happy story. It's quite a stressful. But before um, before I ask you about you know your communications and whether or not you form some kind of association, I mean, it's a different. Do you mind me asking you, Lorna? Excited, obviously, as we all were to get on that housing ladder. It's a kind of moment where we feel we're an adult and we have responsibility. I understand all that comes with it because I was there myself once. But I'm I'm interested in what you knew about leases and lease holds before you took on your property. I didn't know a lot about leasehold, and to cover off myself, I got my father to look over the lease. And he thought that was fully acceptable um, itself. And essentially, when my father looked at the lease, he thought, that's fantastic, that is great. And um, essentially, um, when we were signed into the actual contract itself, um, when we signed into the actual contract itself, um, he thought, yes, the standing charge would be absolutely fine and when we got our first bill it was 600 pounds more so, yeah um, uh, have you have you sorry let, let me in is that are those the kids are those, is that somebody who you letting somebody in no no you, i'm not it's all right, all right one of okay. My neighbors, okay no it's all right <laughs> have you formed yourself into some sort of association have you started working together or are you doing all of this individually so what has happened is we've um, designated um, a rep for each block, um, essentially to try and funnel all our issues into one place um, so we can keep a track of what we should be charged and what we shouldn't be charged um, in the hope to fight back uh, ourselves. But we haven't been given the opportunity to because the managing agent they have appointed um, has a very poor reputation. Um, so I've been in the thrust of it, um, leading the actual um, fight against the developer and the managing agent. But I'm quite thankful that we have the support of our MP ourselves. And, and, and how exhausting are you finding it? Absolutely really exhausting. Yeah. Um, it, it has been mentally exhausting. Yeah. Um, I don't just get involved in communal issues. I've been involved in individual flat issues. And I see people completely frustrated when they see an increase in their bill by £600 and it's not explained.
And that is quite a lot for families, given this, given our current situation that we are actually facing. Oh, so it's quite lot, it? yeah, Absolutely. I, I will say, I'm going to talk to our managers here, Lorna, because I think that there are so many people. I, I better look for somebody who can give help, guidance in how to present yourself, what to say, what you should be charged. Uh, we need to answer people's questions on this. I just, every time we do this subject, I'm just knocked out by how many people are impacted by it. And it does seem as though here is a way of almost extorting money from people. That's how it feels sometimes. Uh, Lorna, thanks so much. And as I say, please stay listening to the show because we're going to do whatever we can.